program director I can see the the president um, is laughing because in in business we mitigate the risk because I didn't want to fall into a trap where the iPad will be <laughs> where the iPad will be lost and then I look around where is my iPad <laughs> and there is no one nearby here it is a stage so I decided um, as part of uh, business um, risk medicating factors, I need them to have um, a pet. Excellency President um, Cyril Ramaphosa, Minister Nati Mtetwa, members of other political parties have seen Jenene around somewhere. My colleagues from the National Office Bearers, Grigori Mufuking, the VP for Business, Yvonne Maitin, the VP for Professionals, Princess Sakani, the TG. It is not only the ruling party president that they have uh, the TG. HOP Tilson Magnoni, the CEO and the staff of the Black Business Council and the colleagues from the National uh, Council, all presidents of different organizations and corporate members. I need also to acknowledge my colleagues from the other business formations present here I've seen the colleagues from Business Unity South Africa or B4SA, uh, Martin. He reminded me that um, he phoned me before he left uh, UK. And even when he arrived here, he said, uh, President, I've told you that uh, I'm coming uh, to your dinner. Uh, Martin, we acknowledge and recognize all your efforts, uh, even the role that we have played within uh, the B4SA during the pandemic. My colleagues from the BRICS uh, Business Council SA uh, present here, I'm not sure whether Stafros um, Nikolai is one of the members of the BRICS Business Council, our chair lady Busi Mabuza. Uh, Puti Mahanyele, she's traveling. And um, Dr. Ayan Danzaluba. The members of um, other business organizations present here is Salim from Turkey, South Africa Business Council present. The colleagues, um, the CEO of the CIFSA Steel Engineering Industry Federation of South Africa, Lucio Trentini, uh, together with uh, De Fazzo, the COO, present uh, here today, and a number of other business organizations and colleagues that are present here. If I were to mention each and every one of you, uh, president will be here and you are not going to make money. We need to make money in business. 
Let me acknowledge our friends from various um, embassies, the ambassadors present here today, Madam Ambassador from Venezuela, I don't know, others, when we, we introduce them, no one claps. <laughs> the lady. The ambassador from uh, Cuba, uh, Otto <laughs> Conzeras. So I'm not sure whether it's a lady or, but let me leave it. Our friends from the, the, the Federation Republic of um, Russia present here, Ambassador and the Military Attaché. You know, before before others, they ask lots of questions. You choose friends. You choose friends and you invite them at any given time in your journey. Colleagues, let me acknowledge uh, all the sponsors in different categories uh, present um, here today that have made this uh, event uh, to be successful. The speakers that uh, were here during the day when we dealt with a number of uh, issues um, as our theme for this uh, summit uh, talks about uh, job creation and range of other issues that encompass um, 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 the economy, the question of uh, localization, uh, designation, the BEE, um, the small medium enterprise, uh, the question of women, and the range of um, uh, aspects that deals with um, the, the empowerment. Madam Program Director, let me say evening to all of you. You are all welcome to this uh, special dinner for the Black Business Council that we are hosting in 2022. You'll agree with me that um, we are holding this um, summit, or the, both the summit um, and, um, and this dinner at a time when the country is at crossroad. This summit is taking place at the time and the dinner when things are falling apart. And I will use that uh, metaphor for a particular time because um, if we accept and acknowledge and recognize that things are falling apart, it then means we need then to choose a path. We need to be honest. We need to be brutal to ourselves. We need to call a spade a spade and we should not be diplomatic around uh, issues, we should not be polite, we should not be uh, apologetic around issues that uh, for the past 28 years up until to this day, we have not achieved them. <laughs> few, few weeks ago, we celebrated uh, the freedom, the political freedom, and there is no freedom without economic emancipation. We cannot talk about freedom if majority of the people in this country, they remain homeless, unemployed. Uh, the, 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 the gap between the poor and the rich continue um, to increase and the economy is not growing. There is nothing to celebrate in these 28 years of this democratic dispensation if the economy cannot 
give us anything as majority of the people, and particularly the blacks and the women and people living with disability in this country. <clears throat> President, I'm saying we need to be brutal, honest, because if the gains that they've won when we are underground, when we struggle, when we form various political organizations to emancipate this country, but the economy still remains in the hands of minority, that is a problem. We need to make hard choices. The question of the land, the question of um, the reversal of uh, hard-won gains, the triple BE, the Preferential Procurement um, uh, Act, those are some of the things that they didn't come easy. We fought for them um, in any form or shape uh, in our respective uh, struggle days. And I'm saying those gains, have, they are continuously being reversed, and that is a problem. We cannot have a government that says to us, it is not our job to be in business. And business remains in the hands of private. That is the problem because the bulk or the minority in this country, they've developed their own empires at the back of government uh, procurement. And there is nothing wrong about that. We continue to be reminded that uh, there's corruption, there's problem, there's all these things. I mean, um, some of the scholars here today, they were to tell us about the, the rise and rise of the Africana tycoons. I'm saying it is at the backdrop of a government um, a contract that were given to those companies, not for a year, but for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 25 years. And if this government they cannot then do that, it's a problem. A transformation agenda that this government, together with us in the Black uh, Business Council, we need them to hold hands and fight and remind ourselves in terms of where are we coming from in terms of the struggles. Because all those gains that we have won, they didn't come easy. They were not given to us in a platter. We fought for them. There are people that business is underpinned by war. Countries, they will fight for oil, they will fight for gas, they will fight for energy, and they will use certain things to justify why they are fighting. Because business is not about uh, being nice boys and nice girls, it's about uh, the war, the trade relations is underpinned by that war. I know some people, they will say, why am I articulating a war talk is because we have nothing to show in these 28 years. You go to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, we cannot identify 100 black companies in a society where majority of the people are black. And that is a problem. Colleagues and friends, if we cannot change the patterns of ownership, the patterns of economy, then we must go home, President. <clears throat> now, I want to talk about human life as equal worth. And one of the scholars that um, wrote a piece on, on this um, topic is um, Will Hutton, is one of the economists in one of the universities because human life has equal worth and it says no lesser human being. In our African languages, that's what it says when you look at the interpretation. Now, when I'm saying things are falling apart, in 28 years, we cannot have a situation where majority of the people, they don't have water, running water, they don't have sanitation. 
and we are then saying we are free. And what type of freedom is this? If we don't have running water, we don't have sanitation in our respective rural areas and communities. Job creation is one of the aspects that uh, we need then to talk and deal with um, as a society. But government must come to the party in terms of addressing and dealing with these issues. Now, if we're then to look at the state-owned entities in any form or shape, whether you want to talk about PRASA, Transnet, ESCOM, the list is long, DINEL, workers are not being paid for whatever reasons. Some of these uh, institutions, they are basically being sold. Some of them, they are even uh, not even having uh, critical certain things that they can basically show to say these are the things that you are doing. And I'm saying, President, that's part of the problem because the back of apartheid was established and built on the state-owned uh, entities in terms of creating jobs for a, for a particular class or particular of people uh, in the country. And if today we are selling everything, there is a holy sale. We are selling everything. We sell SAA, we sell this one, we give that one, we put a price, that one. We are basically saying, let's dismantle ESCOM. The energy in this country, whether it's ESCOM, for business to operate, we require sustainable energy that is state-owned. At the heart of um, what is happening now with ESCOM, we are forever getting, if it's not uh, load shedding, it's blackouts. If it's not blackouts, then there's a story of coal. If it's not the story of coal, there, there's the, a plethora of excuses and, and issues that we cannot basically then put our pulse into the issues to say, what is exactly the problem with energy for failing to give us a sustainable uh, energy every day in our lifetime? And I'm saying, uh, President, that is a problem because no single uh, investor can then put money if you know that you are not going to have electricity the following morning. Let alone the question of um, cross subsidization that the, the bulk of the people that are not working, whether it's communities and um, uh, rural or township, they basically then benefit as part of the uh, the pricing model around um, subsidization. Now, how do we instill dignity to majority of the people without water and sanitation? We have seen in recent times sporadic mushrooming organization, and that must be a concern for all of us, because it then means we have a problem. Our democracy is on a shaky ground. And unless and until we deal with the economic uh, issues in this country. Now, some of the people, they will then talk about um, the economic um, uh, reconstruction. Um, you then ask yourself, um, economic reconstruction and recovery. Before SA, have issued um, a document, uh, Martin, more than thousand and something pages. Business um, government, they issue less than uh, even 30-something pages, and the two, they are not uh, even in sync, uh, because the one is detailed around the range of uh, issues. Now, the underlying thing, uh, President, is that we cannot talk about um, the recovery, because the recovery, it presupposes that those who have lost something, they are going to recover. Those who have nothing, they have nothing to recover. And that's part of the problem in terms of what I term... Things are falling apart. President, I'm saying to you today, in the presence of um, our members, that every time they ask us, but why do you continue having the meeting with the president and his team if there is nothing tangible coming? And we keep saying, hang ten, hold, things are coming. In one of the 
the interviews that uh, the CEO of the Black Business Council, people they were asking, and this is a clinical anecdote because they were saying, Black Business Council is becoming uh, a lap dog of government. We are becoming sweetheart of government because we, we like going to these meetings, we eat biscuits, and I've never eaten any biscuits uh, in those meetings. It's because we had a meeting with you, President, last year on the 28th of uh, September. We raised a number of issues at that meeting without any direction. From that time until January, we, there was no meeting until we had a meeting before the SONA. And, and again, I need them to remind colleagues, uh, even from uh, BUSA, that when we met um, on the three aside with you, President, before the last meeting, we raised a number of issues. We basically said to you, there is a public outcry out there that um, your administration is not embracing a transformatory agenda where majority of the people in this country, they need them to show something. We said to you, President, for the two consecutive uh, SONA, you mentioned the 40% set aside uh, for a, a woman. We reminded you when we met last year in September on the 28th, we said, uh, President, the 40% set aside is not finding any expression, whether in the SOEs, in, in municipalities, in government departments, and everywhere. Because it then means there is nothing basically um, that will be delivered on the 40% uh, set aside uh, for, for women. Because in the absence of a legislative um, or a regulatory framework that gives an expression, it then means the 40% set aside will continue to be a pipe dream. We reminded you again, President, on the 28th of uh, January, when we met before the SONA, we, we repeated the same thing. It was myself, uh, the CEO of Black Business Council, and the head of policy. At that meeting again, together with my colleagues from, um, from BUSA, we mentioned a number of things. We mentioned the question of payment for small, medium enterprises, that there is a problem in government. Most of those companies have closed down because they're not being paid. And surely if this is a government that is caring, if indeed this is a government that um, is serious around job creation, it then means people need them to be paid for the services that they've rendered. President, I said to you, we need to be honest to each other and not be apologetic on a number of other things. And we said to you at the last meeting that we had that from last year, September, we battled to secure just a meeting with you as the leadership of the Black Business Council uh, to deal with our issues that are pertinent to our membership. We have more than 2 million uh, companies that they are part and parcel of this organization. But if we don't get any audience with yourself, it then um, means that is a problem. And hence we are saying things are falling apart, uh, Mr. President. Now, for us to talk about the economic recovery or reset, at our last meeting, President, we said to you, we need to have an economic endeavor. And the economic endeavor is different both in, in its outlook 
the conceptualization of uh, the economic in Daba in comparison to a social compact. And there are lots of uh, scholars that um, um, they are within our realm that they continue explaining to us the difference. And I'm saying, at that meeting, we basically said, we don't want to have only two hours discussion with you when we talk about the economic issues. We want to have a two-day session, and therefore, let us identify uh, what is the four assigned to deal with the framework for engagement so that uh, both parties, business and government, we then agree on the agenda, the framework, the rules of engagement, including a possible date, so that uh, whatever that is then agreed at that economic in Daba, we then count 100 days uh, going forward. And, and that then didn't even find an expression in the State of the Nation address, when you address the nation uh, this year. The only thing that you mentioned, it was the 100 days, not the context in which we spoke about uh, the economic in Daba. And President, that's the reason why I'm saying things are falling apart. President, I'm demonstrating how tough and difficult it is for us to have an audience with you and your ministers. And contrary to that, these are the people that are elected by us. We have elected all of you, but we battle to get an audience. We don't want tenders from anyone. We want an audience to talk about the economic uh, situation of the country, why up until to this day, majority of the people, they remain with nothing. You know, if this meeting, Martin, it was um, a dinner for, for you guys, and I'm sorry when I'm saying for you guys, me and you, we are friends, we come a long way, but I'm saying if this dinner in the summit it was for uh, BOSA Business Unity South Africa, with due respect, all the ministers with their cats and dogs, they'll be here. <laughs> and, and I'm saying we, 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 need, we, need to be, we need to be open and delay. We need to be transparent. We need to be brutal uh, to each other on issues that... Um, they don't find an expression with us because they are then saying, why, why must we go to those people? And some of us, uh, President, we don't own Spaza Shop or we don't even run uh, tenders. We run genuine business where we employ people and manufacture things for this country. <laughs> President, the point that I'm raising and you need to hear us loud and clear today. We are saying democracy is under attack. It's our responsibility, it's my responsibility, equally so uh, your responsibility to defend the gains that all of us will fought and achieve and attain. And we want to see our kids living in peace without any fear of any crime in the country. We cannot have a government where they, they, are, they are seeing all these pockets of things happening where uh, institutions are reversing a transformatory agenda. They challenge a regulation from a treasury. That's supposed then to empower uh, people on a transformatory agenda at the back of preferential procurement. And we don't even have a state that stands firm and says, not in our name. It's not happening. It then means we are on our own. You know, there's that notion that uh, black men, you are on your own. Colleagues, 
when we had a meeting, you said, I should not hold back. And then some of you said, by the way, President, uh, you don't sit on any board. You, are not, you don't envy sitting on any, on any board. You don't envy to be a sweetheart um, and be part of uh, some funny thing somewhere. Uh, you have values and principles, and uh, we believe uh, that uh, you'll stick uh, to the script, you'll deal with the issues that are pertinent to the black people in this country. Now we ask ourselves if this government is elected by the people, I mean, if we, we revert back to the Freedom Charter, the people shall govern. We elect the people, they govern, then then they leave you in the lashes. It's the same as in the Zulu, when, uh, in the Zulu metaphor, when, the, when they are saying, Aba begi bengosi, aba It then means, those who put you in power, you are not going to govern with them. Now, colleagues, Martin, this is bad, né? because you find people and delay talking about us, but we are not in the table. We are not part of the conversation. They are forever talking about inclusive economy. Inclusive economy, we need to include them. But if you look around the room or around the table, all of them, they are the people that they have, but they have not. They are not part of the conversation. The door is closed and locked. Now you then ask yourself, it's not about a concept, inclusive economy. I'm saying those who have been excluded, they're excluded for specific reasons. And it's not about us waiting for them to include us. We need them to define our own agenda of participating in the economy. We don't want to be running around the dispersal shops. We want to be in the mainstream economy in this country. We, we know South Africa we run as if we are, we are in America. In America, they pass various legislation and laws uh, to protect minority. In this country, the other way around. The minority, they have everything. Majority, they run around, they want that peace. Now they must lobby other people then to pass a, a regulation, a legislation. Government, they cannot govern and, and proceed. As the Freedom Charter say, the people shall govern. It's not happening. President, I want to deal with uh, four things then. Um, so that the context is more clearer. We have professionals that um, continuously they are marginalized. I'm saying we have advocates, we have uh, doctors, we have uh, lawyers, and we have accountants, we have auditors, that they continue to be marginalized. Up until to this day, we don't have one big uh, black law firm that government, they support and they use them. We don't have four or five advocates, senior councils that government, they use them. Instead, they go the other way around. Where will we achieve empowerment in this country if our own government, they don't empower us? You know, we, we keep talking about uh, state, uh, state bank. Um, we need to have a state bank. We need to have all these things. But if government, they don't have an appetite to do that thing, that is the problem. Because how many people, they, they earn money uh, through grants? I mean, to date, we have 46% of the population that they get uh, grants, but we don't have a state bank that can basically facilitate in terms of uh, paying those individuals. Contrary, we then see lots of uh, banks uh, either being placed under curatorship, like the U Bank now recently. Um, African Bank, they are not even willing and keen to look at um, um, assisting us in acquiring a uh, number of um, equity in various um, areas. President, one of the other areas that we have raised with you is around the presidential 
um, advisory commission on triple B E E and D. And I'm saying, if this president, Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, for the past two and a half years, we don't have a commission that deals with these issues. It basically is a confirmation that our president doesn't embrace uh, BEE. So we don't have to be a rocket uh, scientist to understand that thing because it's at the backdrop of all these gains that have been um, eroded on the, on the, on the, on the BEE uh, side. Now, the, the last two issues that um, colleagues I want to, to raise is that um, we continue to be excluded when we deal with the broader economic issues. We have economists, we have people that they hold PhDs, we have people that they, are, they, they, are, they hold doctorates um, in whatever form or shape, and um, they were not uh, given by various universities. And, and I'm saying, surely, we, we, we don't have an appetite to talk about um, the, the social uh, compact, because uh, already they've continued, they had more than four meetings without us. And uh, at the expense that um, w one day they will basically just coerce us at the level of net lag then to deal with these issues. Net lag as things stand, I mean during the day, uh, General said um, net lag need them to be uh, really look at different, we need them to reconstruct net lag to be broadly representative to deal with the economic and policy issues uh, in this country. The, the, the other aspects um, that I want to, to deal with um, is um, the, the notion that ministers, your ministers, uh, President Ramaphosa, they are not willing and, and keen to engage um, us on various uh, aspects. And uh, the last time I said, if that is how they want to deal with us, we'll basically engage them on the streets. We've done that thing. You'll recall in 1988 when you occupied the, um, it was, uh, the, the manpower offices at Pritchard. You'll recall that day. Uh, it was when the 1956 uh, labor relations was amended. And uh, the old uh, regime, they were trying to push certain things against our throat. When the late uh, President um, Rolihlahla Mandela, uh, in one of the, uh, the discussions that we had, he basically said, if this democratic government, they don't take you serious or they don't do things that you guys uh, you want, do what you have done to the old regime. That is what he said. We, we, we have hung our hope and our faith in dealing with these issues. And I want to conclude um, by saying the conductor of the orchestra, and, and again, I'm using the, the conductor of the orchestra as a metaphor, because the conductor of the orchestra, the different instruments in the orchestra, they do different things. Uh, but they have a clear vision uh, in terms of the sound that basically come on the other side. And the audience, they enjoy that. And I'm saying it's around leadership. I'm saying if one were then to use that paraphrase of a metaphor of um, um, a, a conductor of the uh, orchestra, it, it requires a dedicated leadership. It requires leadership that is firm and they have a clear vision and uh, they're not apologetic when they do things. But the way things are, um, President, I doubt whether um, we will achieve uh, what we, we have fought for uh, for many, many years. Um, the, the, the other area that um, the number of um, colleagues from different organizations that uh, they've sponsored um, in their different um, companies uh, we have a um, huge group from TUT that they are also present here. We need also then to acknowledge them. I guess uh, Dr. Gwen Ramakopa, she might be sitting uh, also somewhere. Um, and many other colleagues that have assisted us. 
to be where we are. And, and, and I hope, uh, President, you will take um, what um, I've said uh, to you and your team that um, we cannot then continue to outsource leadership to uh, external institutions. Government must govern. If this government then they cannot govern, is a problem. Some of you, you might think, why am I, I, I saying that or talking that or putting that um, a construct? Is because if now, let's talk about the floods in, in KZN. The floods in KZN, the money is given to a, a particular organization, not government. And I'm saying that is a problem because technically that means we don't have uh, faith in our own uh, people that we have elected. Um, colleagues, uh, friends, you are well welcome uh, to this 2022 uh, dinner. Thank you.